What's up YouTube, Brian here back again with another video and today we're going to do a deep dive on my one of my favorite techniques. There's not a lot of fishing techniques out there that I feel like I'm kind of like an expert at. This is one of them. Um, this is a technique that I have put a lot of time, a lot of hours, many years of my life into and that is throwing football jigs. Now, <clears throat> not just football jigs, but I'm going to get even more niche and this is more like I, f finesse football jigs, I guess you could call it, but just slightly downsized football jigs with typically no weed guard for open water fishing, deep water, shallow water, but mostly like open water around hard cover like rock, gravel, sand, not really grass. This is definitely a technique that I don't really fish grass with. I use different kind of jigs for grass. This is more like, hey, I'm going to throw it out, make real long casts work, open water, grass, rock, um, reefs, sand transitions from like soft to hard, um, anywhere where I'm just slowly working the bottom and pulling a bait along, um, typically hard cover. I fish this a lot around rock reefs. I fish in Minnesota and Wisconsin. We have a ton of natural lakes and a lot of them have a lot of rock, um, especially for smallmouth fishing, but also this works just as, just fine for largemouth. <clears throat> but most of my R and D on this has been for smallmouth fishing. So this is not only a niche video about a niche type of tackle, but even a more niche version of it. So this this video is really about me and what I like. Um, it's probably not gonna appeal to a lot of people, but this is kind of like something I just need to get off my chest because I've spent so much time and effort doing this. I gotta document it and put it out there into the world. So if you're looking for a complete finesse football ga uh, football jig guide, this is your video. Okay, so I'm gonna do, we're gonna do three things. We're gonna talk about the jigs, the plastics, I've tried a lot of trailers and I've tried a lot of jigs, the rod and reel combo setups, and we'll talk a little bit about tips and tricks as we go. So first off, um, the old school traditional football jigs are like, you know, big fat football jig heads, big long wire hooks, big weed guards. That is not what we're talking about today. I'm sure that technique is great. That's not what I throw. I throw typically smaller, more compact football jigs, um, smaller package overall and I've narrowed it down to four jigs that I really really like that I actually use on the water that are in my rotation right now. So these are the four jigs that you can use and they will work um, and we're going to start it off with probably one of the best and this is probably one of the most underrated football jigs. I'm, I'm not going to do them in order of ranking. These are all good. Um, I'll say what I like about them. This is the Nishini Lure Works. Um, Finesse football jig. Now, all the things I discuss in this video, there will be links down in the description, and I'm going to be having some codes. So a lot of this stuff you can get off of Omnia. There's going to be a code down there. Uh, we got a code from Beast Coast Fishing that I've, I've been provided with. That'll be down in the description as well. So jump on those codes while they work. Check the comments. All that information is going to be down in well, the description. Anyway, moving forward. This is a fantastic finesse football jig. The Nishini Lure Works um, finesse football. Now, a couple things that are, about, that are great about this. This has a more unique head design than the other jigs that I'm gonna be showing off. This is like a football head, but it also is very flat on one part. Um, the skirt is very minimalistic, but this thing has the gnarliest plastic keeper of any football jig I've ever used in my life. It's a complete wire, metal wire hook, um, plastic keeper, and it keeps plastics pinned. Uh, this is, I wish more companies did plastic keepers like this because it is amazing and it's really functional. It works amazing. It works great. Um, it looks cool. This is a quality, quality football jig. For the price, <clears throat> I'm surprised these are so cheap. Yeah, this should be like a $10 football jig based on just appearance and quality. I mean, look at the sparkle on that head. You're not going to find a paint job on any other football head that is quite like the Nishini. They have a couple different cool options. Um, Nishini is a lure maker out of Canada, although he's from Japan, but he operates out of Canada and the fit and finish and quality on this jig is fantastic. So I, now first off, something I got to say, I throw three ace and a half. That's it. So all my football jigs are either three ace or half. I almost always use the half, but I do switch to the three ace when I'm fishing shallow rocks. So if I'm like on the top of a reef and fishing that like one to six foot range or I'm beating the bank, I'll probably have a three ace. But if I'm out in any deeper water than eight feet, it's it's half ounce all day, every day. I don't go heavier. I have found that I can work a half ounce jig in very deep water in the wind, perfectly fine. So three ace or halves, I basically have a whole bunch of three ace, I have a bunch of halves and all my favorite colors. So anyway, the Nishini Lure Works Finesse football, jig, football Head Jig is fantastic. The other one I like, 
since we're kind of talking GDM-ish, is the Depths Headlock. Now the Depths Headlock, the downsides to the Headlock is they're a little expensive. These are nearly $10, sometimes they're even $10. The paint job on the Headlock comes off real fast. You knock this around on a few rocks, that beautiful glossy green paint job flies off these baits. So adding in some extra clear coat onto this is not a terrible idea if you really wanna keep these things looking nice get the nail polish, clear coat, whatever, you know, go raid your wife or girlfriend's uh, uh, clear coat and throw that on there. Um, now, one of the nice things about the Depths Headlock is that's different than this jig and some of these other jigs is how far back the line tie is. So when this jig is sitting flat, the line tie is way further back. So when you're pulling this thing, it really tends to naturally come up. So if you're imitating crayfish, which is what you're doing with this technique, this is a crayfish imitation technique, um, that, that crayfish is always gonna be getting pulled and sticking straight up in the air, which is very cool. I've caught a lot of fish on this jig. It is 100% a fish catcher. It is fully lead, it's not tungsten, so it's kind of bigger and wider. This is a half ounce version. Um, it does have a very, very nice sharp hook. The plastic keeper on this is pretty, is a little more traditional, it's just that little wire. Um, I will say I have had a lot of success with this jig. It, if you get a good hook set on them, it will pin them really well. The, um, the co components on this, everything's quality, except the paint job, just FYI, it's gonna be, if you use this jig heavy for an afternoon, it's gonna look like lead at the end of the day. It does, the, the paint job is not long for this world. But anyway, quality jig, a little hard to find. Hookup Tackle usually has these. You can find them on all the Japanese tackle shops, um, eBay sometimes, but this is a little harder jig to find where the Nishini is a little easier to find. Tackle Warehouse has them, Omnia has them. This is a little trickier to find. Now, two jigs that are very accessible, that are also really good, is I'm gonna jump over to one that actually does have a weed guard. And this is the Riot Baits. Now this is tungsten, so it is a smaller profile. This is the Riot Baits Little Creeper Jig. Um, I like these because it is tungsten, so you got that slightly smaller profile. Doesn't get hung up as much, you know. I think sometimes with these big lead heads, they do tend to get kind of wedged in the rocks. Um, but, you know, it is, they all get hung up. I don't know really a ratio of what gets hung up more or less, like a tungsten head or a lead head, but it is tungsten if you're into that thing. Um, <clears throat> all The similar thing with all of these heads is the hooks are small. So what makes these kind of like finesse football jigs is you don't, these don't have like big, huge hooks. They have smaller, but very stout hooks. Um, so the package is just a smaller package. Okay, so the Riot's, Riot Baits Little Creeper does have a weed guard. The Wee Guard is not super firm. So here, let's, I'm just gonna show you guys. And it is not very thick. So it's a pretty light Wee Guard. If you're around wood and you are throwing around submerged trees, this is the one I go with. So if I know I'm gonna be dragging around a branch or someplace that's got some fallen wood under the water, which is some of the lakes out here in Wisconsin, the Little Creeper is the, definitely the jig that I pick up. Smallmouth have no problem picking this thing up and you, you can drive that hook set through their mouth with that lighter Wee Guard. Um, <clears throat> I do trim the weed guard off of these. It's very easy to just cut the weed guard off if you know you're throwing in places where it's just rock or open water and you don't really need that weed guard, which I highly suggest if you're not around wood or places that this is gonna get hung up on, like rock, sand, chop the weed guard off. You don't need it, um, that's what I do. And you get more land, your land ratio definitely goes higher without having that weed guard on there. It just gets in the way. So anyway, that's jig number three. Now the final, jig and one that I really really like and I actually just cut this right off of one of my uh one of my uh one of my rods is the Beast Coast. So Beast Coast built a jig that is very 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 similar to the Depths Headlock. So it's almost identical as far as head design goes. It's almost identical as far as the um, size and angle of the hook. The only major difference is how the line, how far back the line tie is. So the line tie is a smidge further back and angled like more backwards on the headlock than the open water sniper. But this is, honestly, this sniper is just as good, if not better than the depth's headlock because this is cheaper and easier to get. $10 jig, not very many places to sell them. Cheaper jig. You can get a code, go down in my description, and um, the quality is just as good. I have been using the crap out of the uh, Beast Coast Open Water Finesse Jig, uh, the Sniper Finesse Jig, all year. And I have caught a boatload of smallmouth on this thing. And the hookup ratio is great, doesn't get hung up that bad, 
And what's cool about this is they have matte heads. Now I took this off the rod on purpose because this is one that has been really beaten up and it's maintained its green color. So the actual lead on this has a matte finish. I don't know how they do it, but it doesn't show wear and just show the exposed lead like a beat up um, jig of the other brands. I don't know if I brought a beat up Nishini, but anyway. Yes, here. So this is what a Nishini Lure Works head looks like. That beautiful paint job goes right off the bait <laughs> after you use this a lot. This, this, this jig I've used a lot. And this is the comparison with the open water finesse. Um, looks great. So this is an absolute home run of a jig. I hope more companies start uh, carrying this. Like I, I hope these get in stock at Omni at some point, but you can buy these directly from uh, Beast Coast. They'll ship them out. They, they, they do really quick shipping. This is basically as good as a, as a JDM style finesse football jig head that is here and available domestically. So big fan of this jig. If I can only pick one right now, it's probably going to be this guy or the Depths Headlock. Those are probably my two favorites, but the Nishini is also really good. I mean, you really can't go wrong with any of these jigs. They all serve their purpose. They're all fantastic. But if I can only pick one Desert Island jig, it's gonna be the Depths Headlock. That's how, or I'm sorry, the Open Water Finesse. That's how much I like this jig uh, this season. Now, let's jump over into trailers. There's a lot of good trailer options. These are the ones that I know absolutely work and they fit the profile of all these jigs. With a trailer on these finesse style jigs, you want something in that two and a half to three and a half inch range, and you want a crayfish profile. So I'm gonna go down the list of the ones I use the most to some other niche, you know, more niche recommendations. So the number one is the Exxon Finesse Craw. I go through tons of bags of these things. These things are my absolute favorite, do, does everything jig trailer, works on these finesse football jigs, works on regular flipping jigs, works on skipping. What I do with these for the finesse football jigs is I, I bite down and I tear off. So here's one I just took off the jig. So I bite and tear off maybe those first two segments off of the jig. And then these things fit perfectly on the uh, finesse jigs. So the X-Zone Muscleback Finesse Craw is a complete and utter, utter winner. Um, if you only need one craw, this is the one to go with. No problem, it totally works. Uh, awesome trailer. So I'm a big fan of the Muscleback Finesse Craw. Anyone who fishes with me knows I use these things a lot. They're always on my boat. I go through tons of these things. So that's my number one. Uh, the other one I like, uh, we're going to go into a few others here real quick. The Mega Bass Rock Hog is also a fantastic finesse football jig trailer. So it's got a, lot, a bigger, bigger legs, a little more flappy action. It's got a big bulbous body. And believe it or not, this is also doubles as a really good skipping plastic. So if you're gonna skip docks with a jig, this, because of the, the meat on the back of this thing, and I usually trim these little um, tentacles off, but this also makes a really good skipping trailer because it's got a, a good, nice, chunky body that helps skip across the water, but also is a really fantastic football jig trailer. So rock hogs are probably my, maybe my second most used. And then another one I've been getting into more this year is the Gee Crack Bellows Craw. This bad boy gives a much bigger profile and these things are coated in scent. So when you open these things up, a lot of people to call these things um, um, Gee Crack or uh, no, what do they call it? Um, they call it like, it's you know, it smells like poop. Like, I forgot what they, there's a nickname for this thing. But anyway, um, point is, th to me, they don't smell like poop. They smell like burnt food. So when you kind of really do smell it, it kind of smells like you left something in the oven too long. That's what it smells like to me. But anyway, I've caught a lot of fish with this on the back of these finesse jigs. What I typically do is I take a scissors and I chop off that like part front that like this part right here, I chop off. So a lot of these jigs, I'll just trim them down a smidge and so they fit really nice onto the, the um, hooks. This Gee Crack Bellows Craw, I've had the bait just sitting there not working the bait because I'm like checking my phone or doing something on my map. And I've had fish come over and just boom, pick this thing up and run off with it. I don't know if it's the scent. I don't know if it's the oils that are on this thing. But for some reason, this really gets bit, especially smallmouth. They love the Gee Crack Bellows, uh, Bellows Craw. Comes in some cool colors. I actually have a, I have a rag here because I knew I was going to be handling this bait. And this, these things leave a slimy oil on your hands because they're that scented. Um, Sorry, Gee Crap. <laughs> the nickname for this thing is the Gee Crap because they, anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so I like the Bellows Craw. I love the X-Zone Finesse Craw. I love the Mega Bass Rock Hog. 
Um, another JDM tricky, you know, more trick one is the Doe Live, um, Do Live Cross, is three inch. This is a really small. These things are, the bodies on these Doe Live um, Cross, these three inch, are very, very thin and they're tricky to rig because these things are really slimy. So when you're trying to get this on the hook, it's really, your, your hand slides around these things. Kind of a pain in the butt to rig, but they are absolutely fish catchers. A lot smaller of a profile, very slender. But if you're into the OSP and you want to do the like the JDM thing, um, this is probably your best option for like a tricked out JDM plastic to throw on the back of these football finesse jigs. Um, 10 bucks a pack, they're pretty expensive. So I wouldn't say this is like a great everyday trailer, um, you know, but up to you. So anyway, don't, these absolutely work. Gotten plenty of bites on these things. Approved. Um, <clears throat> a couple other honorable mentions here is um, Riot Baits. So the guys who make the uh little creeper jig they have two good jig trailer options for this smaller finesse profile we'll go with the smallest one um this is called the ta uh, tantrum this is a two and a half inch this is a little teeny tiny chunk um i've caught actually a lot of fish on the tantrum i actually had a muskie come and eat this thing off of one of the back of the riot jigs uh so just because it's a small little plastic doesn't mean it's not going to get you big fish um Anyway, this is a really good, just small, simple little chunk. Works really good on these small finesse um, uh, football jigs. Their other bait, which is a little bigger, but it's still really small, is called the Little Fuzzy. So this is a three and a half inch. If you notice, this is a little more of a wide profile, although it is thin. But on the back of one of these finesse football jigs, this thing works, uh, it looks really cool. So I really like this Little Fuzzy. Uh, looks really like a, just a real cray crayfish. I'm gonna throw it on the Nishini jig real quick. So this is kind of what that looks like. Um, you know, this gives it a really kind of a wide profile. This is really good for just dragging, um, you know. Anyway, that actually looks really nice as a combination right there. The little fuzzy with the Nishini Lure Works um, finesse football head. So anyway, Riot has two good options, a little bigger with the little fuzzy and then a little smaller with the Tantrum. Uh, Three more I want to talk about. This is a newer one. This is this came out at iCast this year. This is the Missile Baits Mini D Chunk. Um, this absolutely works on the back of these finesse football jigs as well. Um, so I don't have one that I can rig it on. But anyway, so if you're into Missile and you like the Missile brand, this absolutely works as a chunk. This is, I think, about three inch, three and a half. I don't know the length on this. Anyways, but the Missile Baits Mini D Chunk absolutely works as a trailer on these. And then um, I got to give an honorable mention to our buddies at Strike King, the Baby Rage Craw. So this is the smallest Rage Craw. This is only three inches. Um, this thing actually works really well on a football jig as well. This has the biggest, widest craws out of all the um, plastics I've talked about. So if you really want to work a football jig fast and really kind of pull it along and really get some of that flappy action going, this is the one to go with. So if you're into striking, these are probably really easy to find. You know, you get good striking deals here and there. But the baby rage craw, the littlest, tiniest rage craw, absolutely works on the four jigs that I mentioned here in this video. And the last one, this is the last but not least, is the classic, the um, Smalley Beaver, the little three and a half inch Reaction Innovations Beaver. This is probably the biggest one, like profile wise of all the baits that I, I mean, it's still really thin, so it goes on really good. But um, if you kind of want a more bulky profile, you want to get a little bigger, um, this is also an excellent trailer option. People probably have these sitting around already in their bags because this is just a really popular plastic in general. But the Smalley Beaver, not the regular Sweet Beaver. This is the smaller version, the three and a half inch. So those are all the trailers that I 100% have used and 100% have caught fish on. Don't need to get anything beyond these. Uh, you should find one of the options of all the baits that I talked about that'll, that you can find or that work for you. Pick, pick a few, try them out. Last, one, last thing I wanna talk about is rods and reels and line. Now, when I'm fishing finesse football jigs, I want a very, I want a longer rod. So I want like 7.3 to 7.5. And then I want a rod that's not a broomstick. You want something that leans more medium heavy. <clears throat> you don't want heavy because these jigs do not have big hooks. So if you use a really heavy setup, like a like a 7.9 heavy, um, this is a that's a bit much for these jigs. You're gonna pull the hook out of fish's mouth when you've caught them. So it's not so much that you're gonna like bend the hook out or anything like that. <clears throat> it's that if you're putting too much force onto fish when they're running around with these kinds of jigs, 
Um, the hole is really going to open up in their mouth. And then when they get up and they jump, especially smallmouth, that jig is going to go flying. So you want some give in the rod. You want some bend to it. And you want a, you don't want a super heavy line. So you want like 14 to 16 pound fluorocarbon is what I always run. And then you want a rod that's got some tip that can let those fish bend and fight and flex while you're reeling them in. Also, when you're fishing these things, I'm always making really long casts, letting it hit the bottom. And then I'm just pulling in the slack line and I'm pulling the bait. I fish with people who fish football jigs and they don't do it right. They kind of hop it like a regular casting jig. So they're like, throw it out and they're kind of hopping it, hop, hop, hop. You want to throw it out, hit the bottom, and then just pull. You're just pulling it. You're letting it feel all the rock, all the gravel, everything. You want to feel it tick, tick, ticking, and then just pulling your slack real. It's not the most exciting way to fish, but man, does it work. And then when you get a bite, it's usually just the end of the rod tip going like this. Like the fish picks it up, starts swimming with it, and then you just reel in and just lean back. Just, just do a sweep. Boom. So my favorite rod and reel setup that I, this is like literally out of my boat that I've been using this fall is the G Loomis NRX uh, 873 Carolina rig rod, the CRR. This is probably the most amazing football jig I've ever used in my life. This is like the football jig. If you're throwing football jigs from three eighths to half ounce, and this king can do three quarter as well, this can go heavier jigs. This is the shit. This, is, this rod is amazing. It's super sensitive. It's got enough tip in the flex. You can really drive a hook home. You're gonna feel every darn thing on the lake with this thing, it's insanely sensitive. I'm using a Shimano Bantam, uh, the new Bantam in a seven speed, although an eight speed is not a bad idea as well. Just go as fast as you wanna go on these reels because you're just picking up slack when you're fighting fish. Um, and this is a dragging setup, so you don't really need, you don't really need a high speed reel, but it definitely come, it, it comes in handy. Um, but anyway, so I run a seven speed, I'm running 15 pound Tatsu, and I'm running the NRX 873C, one of the best football jig rods, period, end of story. It's amazing. I've caught so many. I've caught tons of fish on that rod. In the old version two and the new NRX Plus, beautiful rod. Now, an X-Factor rod that I picked up this fall, and I've actually been using this quite a bit the last couple of weeks, is the G or the Dobbins, believe it or not. This is the Dobbins 7.5 me or heavy. Um, although if we all know Dobbins, heavies aren't heavy in Dobbins, ignore that. This is, this fish is way more like a medium heavy. And this is the 754 C. So the 754, this is a 75. This rod is fantastic for football jigs. Um, I was throwing three eighth and half ounce. All these jigs that you see on the table, I've thrown on this rod and it's superb for football jigs. Like for dragging, this has got Torzite guides. Um, this rod is incredibly sensitive and then setting a hook and sweeping a hook set on, on, on smallmouth deep water with this rod is fantastic. So believe it or not, killer, killer football jig rod. I know both of these rods are very bougie. These are like over $500 rods. Um, it's what you come to my channel for. You get used to it. Right. But anyway, point is, um, you don't have to have a super high end rod to do this technique. Just find a seven, three to seven, five medium heavy, get some good fluorocarbon. Like I like Seeger and Vizix is great. Um, FC Sniper is good. I'm running Tatsu just for fun. Um, oh, on the Dobbins, I'm throwing the um, uh, the the Zillion. So I have the Zillion and a seven ratio. Um, so anyway, I think you got to have a slightly bendy, longer, medium, heavy rod, good fluorocarbon, tons of different trailers you can play with. I gave you good four good jig options. Go out there and try the finesse football jig in open water, rock piles, reefs, sandbars, um, drops, ledges, anything where there's drops, quick drops, drag that football jig down, rock spines, um, weed edges. So if there's grass and there's grass to hard transition, you can throw these football jigs and just bring it on the outside of those weed edges. It's just a great technique for deep water fishing. Works all year. You can football jig in the spring, dead of the summer, and then in the fall and winter, you can really crack them on it. So... Uh, anywhere lakes have uh, heavy crayfish populations, if you're not throwing a football jig around rocks or hard structure, you're nuts because this gets bit um, and gives you an excuse to have a bait caster in your hand all year instead of dragging around like a Ned Rig on a spinning rod. So anyway, if you have any more suggestions or you have any questions, comments, please hit the comment section in the video below. I hope this video is informative. Like I said, this video is more for me and just doing a brain dump of this technique that I really love and I've kind of perfected over the last couple of years. Um, 
Anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, please hit like and subscribe and check the description of this video for links to all the stuff I've talked about, where you can pick it up, and there will also be some discount codes. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Take it easy.